The different types of ionizing radiation we've learned about alpha is the most ionizing. That also means that it's got the least penetration. So it can be stopped by thin piece of paper or foil. And when it's traveling in air, it ionizes air particles. So it can go up to a maximum of 10 centimeters in air. Followed by that, we've got a beta, beta plus or beta minus, which gets stopped by five millimeters of aluminum. And in air, it can go up to one meter maximum. Okay, then we have gamma. Not to say that gamma isn't ionizing, it's just the least ionizing compared to other types of ionizing radiation. So it means that it's also the most penetrating. To stop uh, a gamma, we can use a couple of centimeters of lead, or you can use a meter or so of concrete as well. Uh, and in air, it can technically go infinitely far, but its intensity decreases following something called the inverse square law. So its intensity decreases quite quickly with distance. Okay, this setup here can be used to determine the type of radiation that's being emitted by this reactive source. The reactive source can emit any combination of alpha, beta, or gamma. And we're going to use some absorbed materials in front of it. We're going to put that in front. And we're going to go from no absorbed material all the way to paper, uh, aluminium, and then thick lead. Okay, then we've got a Geiger motor tube, or sometimes called a Geiger counter, that's in front of it. And that's placed near the reactive source. It needs to be less than a couple of centimeters away uh, from the source, but not too close. Um, the reason why it needs to be close is because if it's more than a couple of centimeters away, it won't be able to detect the alpha radiation. But if it's too close, then there's a limit to how much the Geiger Muller tube can measure as well. So it's, this is going to be a couple of centimeters away. We've got an average background count rate radiation of 20 counts per minute. Now that's just the ionizing radiation that's in the atmosphere. Okay, so we're going to just ignore that and we're going to subtract that from our, our results. Okay, we're going to use this data in this table here to determine what type of radiation is being emitted. So when we've got no absorbed material, we've got five, 580. And as soon as we add paper, it's decreasing. So that must mean that this source is having some uh, emitting some alpha radiation because uh, that's being stopped by the paper. The beta and the gamma wouldn't be stopped by the thin paper. And then we add an aluminium sheet, and that's also causing the current rate to decrease. So this is also emitting beta as well. Okay, so it's emitting alpha and beta for sure. And then when we add, and, and so you can see here, once with the aluminum sheet, um, which is going to stop the alpha and the beta, it's just we've got the, uh, roughly the background current rate. And then when we add a thick lead, it's still roughly it's equal to the background current rate. So that means there's, this source isn't emitting any gamma, because the gamma would have gone through the th a thin sheet, but then we would notice that a much more significant drop. But uh, when we go add the lead, but we can notice that we're already at the background radiation count rate. So that means there's no gamma being emitted.